I hate limited edition watches, and for the most part, I think they're kind of a scam. I know that you're gonna start typing in the comment section examples of great limited edition watches, and of course, there are exceptions to the rule. There are some fantastic limited edition watches. I'm not here to put a blanket statement and say all limited edition watches suck. But nine out of 10 do suck. They're kind of a plain money grab, and I'm tired of people not talking about this issue. Now, at the end of this video, I will talk about some things that you can watch out for to prevent yourself from buying a scammy limited edition watch, just some tips that I picked up over the years. Now let's talk about why I think they actually suck. Limited editions primarily used by companies to create fear of missing out. They're there to create a little bit of pressure for people to buy a watch. If you don't buy it right now, chances are you're gonna miss out on this great once in a lifetime opportunity to own this limited edition watch. And in terms of limited editions, there are sort of two types. You have limited edition in terms of how many units were produced, let's say 500 or 1,000 or 2,000 or 5,000. And you also have limited for the time. So it's not necessarily limited to how many units will be produced, like 500, for example, but it's limited to, let's say, for one year of production. In other words, the company will only make a watch for one year, however many units they make, they make, and that's it. They won't make this watch ever again, or so they say. This decision to limit how many watches company makes is sort of counterintuitive, right? Because companies are in the business to make money. So if the watch is great, why not make as many examples of this watch as possible, sell it to as many people as possible and make as much money as possible, right? I mean, it's, it's just basic logic. Well, again, the purpose of limited edition watches are sort of twofold. Number one is to create some scarcity and create some mystique around the brand. If you don't buy this watch right now, chances are you won't buy it ever again. It's creating hype. It's preying on this hype culture that we live in currently. And number two, it's to sell other models from the same watch manufacturer. Oh, well, you missed out on this limited edition watch. Guess what? Don't worry. We have this other watch that's almost the same that you can buy right now. This limited edition scarcity model of marketing is nothing new. It's actually not even exclusive to watches. Shoes have this, fashion has this, uh, cars have it. A lot of different industries uh, employ the same principles of marketing. Let's take, for example, a watch like Mido 1961, a great rainbow diver. Actually, I own one of these watches and it's a pretty good timepiece. So what they did, they created this limited edition and they made 1,961 of them. The watch is actually very similar to other Mido divers. The only difference is the dial. Everything else is exactly the same. Uh, the strap options, the case finishes, the movement, the crystal, uh, the case shape, everything else is exactly the same except for the dial. Which brings us to another problem with limited releases. Limited releases are actually not that limited. This Mido Rainbow Diver was limited to 2000 watches, which is sort of this midfield of limited releases. It's not too little, but it's not too many. However, there is plenty of different companies. Seiko is one of the big offenders in this, where they create these limited releases that are actually not even limited to that few watches. They're limited to 5000 watches. I mean, realistically, in a good market, they're not even going to sell 5000 of this model. So why make a limited release of 5,000 watches? It's just to create scarcity. It's just to force people to buy it because you're scared and you don't know if you'll be able to buy it in the future. Which brings us to another problem with limited releases. And this one is the bigger problem. It's that scarcity becomes too great and it creates hype. And now you create some real problems. You get resellers, people that are actually trying to make money on limited release models. They buy a watch with the hopes of it going up in price and then reselling it for way, way more money. When the watch is actually limited model and when it's a desirable watch from a desirable brand, let's take for example, Omega Speedmaster, the Snoopy edition, the 50th anniversary of the Snoopy award. This watch was released in 2020 and to this day it sells for multiples of its retail price. One of the big drivers behind this model and behind 
its success are the resellers. People who are trying to buy this watch just to resell it, just to make money. They don't care about how special this watch is, what it represents. They only care about the dollar signs behind the watch. I'm not trying to make these people into these evil beings. They're just people trying to make money. The problem that I see with this is that us regular watch collectors cannot get our hands on these limited releases. It's been three years since the release of the Silver Snoopy Award uh, watch. And to this day, it's almost impossible to buy it. In fact, the ADs no longer take names for the waiting lists. It's just whoever called them and reserved one uh, supposedly is going to get one. Although I don't know, because in two years, we're going to have the 55th anniversary edition, probably. So majority of watch collectors are not able to buy the watch that they want to buy. And I know it's a very first world problem. Ooh, boohoo, I can't buy this very specific type of Speedmaster that I want to buy uh, in grand scheme of things. This is not important. But what is important, we're playing into their hand. The reason why this watch is limited is not because Omega cannot make any more of this watch. Of course they can. It's that keeping this watch limited helps their brand more than not it being limited. Having this watch resell for multiples on the resale market creates great aura around the brand, makes the brand more desirable to a lot of watch collectors just because of that fact, and thus keeping them more relevant. To sum up the two initial problems that I have with limited releases is number one, sometimes limited releases are not even that limited. They make way too many examples of one watch. They just call it limited release in order to drum up some interest in a watch and this dilutes the brand and it makes uh, keeping up with limited releases very difficult. Uh, the other problem is sort of the opposite when the limited release is actually limited. And this is a big problem because regular watch collectors cannot get our hands on these watches because they're all held up by resellers, by dealers who are trying to make money on these watches. They're trying to hold them for future appreciation or they're just buying up all the inventory and reselling it on the resale market for multiples of the original MSRP. These are just the two initial problems with limited release watches. But you also get these secondary waves of problems. Like for example, when Omega partnered up with Swatch Group and they released the Moon Swatch. Creative name, not the best watch. Now, even though this wasn't a limited release watch, the hype behind it was so strong that people were treating it as limited release. We're so conditioned with these limited releases and with this hype that even though the watch is not actually limited release and you have to wait a little bit for it, some people panic and they have to buy it right now. They have to buy it right now because the hottest thing. So this is kind of a secondary byproduct of having limited release as a model of releasing products. Anything that's introduced to the market and has any scarcity whatsoever will just go up in price like crazy. People will line up for hours, sometimes days, in order to buy this product that if they wait a few months, will just be available everywhere and nobody will even want it like is happening right now with Moon Swatches. If you go into a Swatch store, chances are you can buy any one of the variations no problem without paying a crazy premium. Although I'm not sure if you would want to with this specific watch. That's one of the byproducts of limited releases as this hype model. Another byproduct is that if the watch, if the limited release watch is not selling for multiples on this resale market, well, that must mean that the watch is not actually all that good, which is ridiculous. We shouldn't judge how good the watch is, how good the product is based on its resale value in the future. People have this perception if it doesn't sell for double the retail price, well, then it's not a good watch. It might be a good watch. It just is not as popular as some of the other watches. And that's another trap that companies fall into. They have to have their limited releases sell for way more on the resale market. Otherwise, they're going to lose some of the brownie points with their crowd. And so far, I talked a lot about the negatives of limited release models. Are there any positives? Well, in the current market, I don't see too many positives of limited releases. I mean, other than some, you know, bragging rights of owning a watch that is super limited and you're one of the only handful of people in the world that has the ability to own the watch. 
other than that, not really. I think limited releases started back in a day with the intent of testing the market. They would make a watch in a limited quantity and to see if there is interest in the market for this model. If there is interest in the market for the model, well, then they would release it in a wider release. And we kind of see that happening right now, but the limited release model right now is not to test the market, it's to hype up the market. It's to create this artificial demand. It's to uh, make sure that people are not thinking whether they should buy the watch or not. It's they're thinking how lucky I am that I'm allowed to buy the watch. Not if it's good or not, it doesn't matter. If I'm allowed to buy it, I'm gonna buy it because hey, tomorrow it might be gone. But all of that being said, how do you actually buy a limited release watch? And should you buy limited release watches? Well, my rule number one is buy the watches that you actually like. So if you do that, it doesn't really matter if the watch goes up or down in price because you're buying something that you actually like. At the same time, it's unrealistic to assume that you buy a watch and you're just gonna keep it for the rest of your life without selling it ever. I mean, it could happen, but chances are you'll probably want to sell the watch in the future and buy something else. It's just the nature of being a watch collector. In that case, a couple of things you wanna watch out for if you do buy a limited release, granted that you actually like the watch, but now you want to make sure that you don't lose money on it in case you decide to sell it in the future make sure that it's actually a limited release. If it's released to 5,000 models, well, it's probably not that limited. If it's 500 models, okay, that might be something that's gonna go up in price in the future. The general rule is that the more examples of the watch were made, the longer you would have to keep the watch to make any money on it. And once again, I'm hoping that you're not buying the watch just to make money. Another thing to keep in mind is that the appreciation in price is proportionate to the price of the watch. Let's say the Patek Philippe Nautilus with that stupid Tiffany dial that every other watch company was copying for years, because it was only made to 250 examples, and because these examples were so difficult to find, and the watch itself to begin with is very expensive, you know, the top 1% of the world is buying these type of watches, all that exclusivity drove the prices out of the stratosphere. The prices just went nuts and the demand just went nuts for these watches. But at the same time, if you have a watch that's very affordable, chances are it's not going to appreciate to tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's gonna go up in price, but it's not going to be anything crazy. So if you are buying these watches, don't expect to make money of watches especially affordable watches by investments that will actually produce value. So that's it. That's the video. Those were my reasons why I think limited release watches are just stupid. They're there to create a bunch of marketing hype and they're not actually creating better examples of a product. But what do you guys think? Leave a comment in the comment section below. Am I wrong? Are limited release watches actually a good thing? I always enjoy reading your comments. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and we'll see you next time. Bye.